Okay, great. I think let's you know everybody's clear. Um, let's just next ten minutes. Any issues uh, that you encounter, but then we go directly into like how far are we from actually doing what we want to do? Okay, so Abdulhamid. Okay, so hi Abe. So uh, yesterday we were having issues with connecting to our server. Uh, we haven't really been able to, able to do that, and it's still not working. We can't SSH into the server. I'm muted. So, Abdul Hamid, did you guys try to start it? Yeah, we tried to start it. It's but I mean, so did you wait? So, uh, normally, I would I would use the with like the status, and then I would start, and then I will keep checking the status until it gets active. Because what I I think it has been working like that, right? Before you started, now it was stopped. So now I'm starting it just, but um. I don't know why it didn't work. So, like if you start, maybe just like you you are starting and stopping. I don't know. If, is there was there like that, or just do you just start it and then it didn't work? So so first, when we check the status, yeah, it says distance is healthy and running. Yeah, but we try to uh, SSH into it. It says operation timed out. So after some point, we just try to stop and then start the server back again. But uh, then it changed it to instance is not in a healthy state. Okay, so normally, yeah, I mean that one, that one should not it not in a healthy state should not be a problem because it's just. I mean, it's a uh, it will change to healthy um, depending on the time. So, but I'm just much more okay. Let's. I want to understand if it's anything got to do with those buttons not working or just that we are not showing like we, we are just acting um so for example like you will try it now it should work but i want you to like once the initialization finished you could actually check the status and then stop and then run again just so that you can check. But um, so right now, it's in the initialization state. So if you check it, what do you get? Now we we can assess it. It's working. Yeah, yeah. But yesterday we have tried everything from the Athenix buttons. Yeah. But yeah. so yeah, now what I want you to do is just to stop it, and then to then start it. So like you can actually now press stop. And then check the time, like you know, until it gets actually stopped. Or I'll tell you, and then you will you will start it so that if it happens later, that we know where the issue is. Okay, so I'm seeing instance is not in a healthy state when I yes. click on the status check yeah, because it's initializing. It's still in the initial. Okay, now group two has stopped. Somebody has stopped it, right? 
uh, no, I just click status check. Uh, or another group member may have stopped it because now it's stopped. I just stopped it. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I'm saying. I think synchronization is yeah. important. So now, yeah. if, it, if this happens, if multiple people do that, because you have the same thing that you might be like, one is stopping, one is starting, and normally the group leader should be like, okay, no, like we are, I am starting. If anyone is doing, then you know, take control. Uh, okay. So that otherwise, it's exactly those issues will happen. Like one is starting, one is stopping, and and you you think then it's not working. Okay, so it can, I, yeah, yeah, like start the server now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then I will check. Yep, now it's starting. And it can I so check the status? After yes. this point, you should not do much other than just like waiting until you log in um, and announce to the group that it is started. So, because it is exactly, it works exactly as expected. So now you can SSH. But the status check is still saying in Yeah, because, uh, because the thing is like, a status change will wait some time. I mean, the, I mean, we are, I'm asking the 10 team to update, but it's, it's anything that is not running, they call it unhealthy. So that's just, but it will take time for the, for full initialization. So, this, this, the computer goes through a process, right? The process of initializing and that. I know what you mean, and I think I've been asking them, so they were busy, so that's why they didn't fix it. But in principle, they should show you which status it is, and then like the health. The health and the status are very two different things, but they it's merged at when you see it. So Yaya, can you say such, no? Uh, no, it's hanging there, I'm waiting. You should be able to. I can also test, and I think it should be possible that you are. Saying operation time dot. Yeah, it's fine. It's initializing still. Okay. No, no. Yeah. So we're you able to SSH now? Yeah. Yeah. So it's still initializing, but in the middle you can't. But so we will be able to show that. I'm I'm gonna ask them again. Not mine, but still it's not yeah. SSH. It's, maybe the, 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 the disk is probably quite a lot. So normally when that also happens, it takes some more time than expected. But in principle, now, <clears throat> Yaya, did you log in? No. It, still, it's linking. It's yeah. not a system. I think now you should, because I am able to log in. So if you just... Uh, think, uh, yeah, yeah. Can I control, control? Cancel your request in the... Yeah, exactly. Okay, you should cancel first and then yeah, again, SSH. Okay, so <clears throat> I think this is for everyone as well. I think we, we I hopefully will fix will fix it. I mean, it's it, this is very confusing the health state currently as it's, but because yeah, it, because it works, it's fine. Do one thing, and then do the next thing. 
So, okay, good. Uh, anyone else? Any other problem? Because Abraham, Abraham, you raised your hand. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Did I just, was, I, was I just on right now? Just now, yeah. Okay, uh, so I was saying that yesterday it was not working for our team as well. And uh, when I tried to connect this morning, it brought another message. It says uh, remote host identification has changed. Yeah, so that one you have to delete the remote hosts. I mean, it's fine, it's not a problem but you have to delete the known host just so that it, it is so means whenever the pass it gave you to the known host just go and delete it it's okay so so known host keeps like for the same url if the ip changes it war it warns you normally it warns you and you log in but if you don't log in just delete that one okay so and i think the part with your like with Team five is that actually somebody has deleted all the home directory. And that, that mess that then late no one was able to log in. So I then recreated the instance. So in principle, you have now access, but without I'm sure any data in there because it was already deleted. So it's a new instance. So you don't you have to do whatever you have been doing again um, if you haven't saved it. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm not sure who, who how that happened, but okay, I will yeah. try to figure it Yeah, it's just out. again, you know, in groups, people just be careful. You are given a pseudo access so that you can install yourself some things when you need not to interfere in others' home directory. I think that is really not a good habit. Just do only the pseudo only is you know, your power is to just be able to install so that everybody can install, for example, some you know, uh, uh, apps, uh, packets and stuff like that. You don't have to then, you know, you don't have to wait somebody to do it. But if you are affecting others, just their home directory, that is really not good. Like it's, um, it's, yeah, so be careful. Okay, Mikias and then Alexander. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, we are having the same issue uh, EIS group has. Uh, and I followed the instruction that you were saying earlier, but still the same issue. So can you check? Which group is that? Group one. So group one is stopped. So can you start it? Okay. No, so, no, it's actually starting. Yes. I don't know if it's now, but it's starting now. Yeah. Okay. So we should be able to log in after a while? Yes. So just keep trying and then... Um, it should be started again like everyone just when you start if someone stops this becomes confusing so make sure you know yeah, I, I made sure i notified them all exactly. my group members yeah. right I now did. it's initializing so that okay. in a just soon you will you will be able to log in and also okay. the 10x team is working on it now to give you at least the status whether it's running or stopped or initializing or or not okay. so that should solve it Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, Alexander? Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Uh, the issue of instance related to networking is solved as yeah. all groups. But one yeah. issue is uh, when uh, the instance is working, but it is a problem of storage. When I see the, the available storage, 80% are have used. Uh, but, uh, that I think uh, twelve percent is left, but not working for all. One time I will uh, restart again. It works. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think why it's yeah. I mean, let let me just check. So you have now a lot more space still available. But of course, if you are loading another model, 
it will be basically well so yeah, otherwise it should be it should work so in a way you have now 26 gigabyte available okay, okay. exactly and um, now it's why do you keep i mean the, the part is it's fine i mean i could have increased the more than 200 gig but uh, i don't uh, but i don't think that's not efficient use of memory i mean in a way the whole group must not use everybody should not download ev everything there mm -hmm. if you are downloading models then maybe just mm -hmm. load them in one common directory so okay. that they you know it's not duplicated if you're using the same thing so that's why i thought 200 gigabyte is enough um for most of the things so maybe that you you, you have more duplicated models lying and i can say you know that that's like um like for example uh let me just give you uh, it's it's of course mostly it is you and rudolph that has much more of the space better still um maybe just check where you know by using this command i'm going to give you uh and if it is necessary you can ask me this is really necessary for my work then you know we need more space okay. but uh, i would say at the time that is not the case like if you use for example sudo uh, just a command now i send um on um the meet like the, the chat here so you can check, you know, which which file, which home directories has more. And if you want to, for example, within your own space, you want to check which actually directory is uh, having more. Then, like for example, you can do this. Okay. Okay. I will. Okay. Please, uh, Yabiba. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, first. Morning. Uh, okay. So regarding the the space management uh yeah, yesterday we tried to to freeze some and i i use a technique and would like to to make sure that this technique is good so i i went to the to the root and uh, i created a folder i named that folder uh group four and for the common folder that we'll be using in our group we will move those folder to that of to that folder one yeah. and maybe maybe we have a, a llm model that we want to use and um, in that directory we will copy once so everybody will not download the same the same llm that is an example i'm giving and yeah, after yeah. that so, i gave yeah. i gave to that uh, folder they will be right to everybody to have access by using uh sudo i will put that in the uh, in the uh, in the chat so that you can tell me if it is uh, correct yeah. uh, but i think yeah most people would be able to do that right change just permission it's fine that's exactly what i'm recommending and i see that you have a group four folder uh which you have now 40 gigabytes in there now the the part is i think that's good uh, rudolph also when you are in your home just you can check whatever is which part is taking memory using the commands um as well then make sure that it is you know, when you when you issue those commands you'll be able to know which files or which folders are larger like basically okay good oh, good then you'll be able to clean the parts that you don't need yes so, exactly so exactly what i gave earlier for example for alexander anyone can use in their username and then if you want for example if you distinguish one for example folder so for example i'm just gonna give again so there is one for example you will find um a lot more it's taking space so then you want to know inside there which one actually taking space so for example here's another example 
and this um, so for example this one similarly you know Alexander for you it will give you that is a larger file and then within that larger file you know what is which one is taking and then you realize okay maybe this folder may exist already in the group full folder so you don't need it and then you can clean it and this is the same for everyone i think most people keep running out of space because they are you know the just the llama model already is 40 gig and if you are three times cloning it you already are you know getting very close thank you so okay so the same is for everyone Great. Okay. Abraham, is that a new question? Uh, yeah, I'm, I removed the host, but it says now permission denied public key. Okay. Can you maybe just screen share? I mean, okay. I don't know what you, just a known host, right? Yes, yes. Not, not I, there, there was a command there. I, it said remove with this command. I used okay. that. Okay, just, let me, just screen share, screen share so that I can see. Okay. Can you see? It's coming. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that is the known hosts is basically the, dot, the average dot SSH known hosts. Where did you? Yeah. Uh, so how did you remove it? No. So that was not removal. So okay. That's not removal. Remove so, with. No, no, no. Uh, I think you then removed the key. Uh, so maybe just can you do, remove just no copy home average dot SSH known hosts. This one. Just uh, yeah, exactly, just known hosts only, and then just remove that. RM, right? RM, and then. So now the the problem is you might have deleted G five ten academy org from your config key, or so you have to restart SSH keygen. Um, okay. So um, so can you go? Can you check the config? So you can cut the config. Your SSH. So cuts. You know, CAT, CAT. Yeah, your SSH. Slash, no, slash. Config. Okay, so you have there, and um, if you, and then ls.ssh okay so you have that so now can you just um uh, start ssh key engine so it's probably a service so sudo so maybe just type this one uh, so i just type there Without the first one, you have to do this, yeah. Um, okay, so, so uh, maybe it's K engine. Okay, so let me just check. Uh, maybe just without so you do the same, but without the keygen, just SSH only. Delete the keygen. Delete all. Okay. So just up to the S. Dot, but that's it. Okay. So start it. Uh, SSH service is not found. So let me just check which one actually service.
SSHD uh, services. No, that is not. So that's kind of the. It should be okay. So just maybe try now, just SSHing because that should be the one. But um, maybe just SSHD. Just try SSHD. Uh, you, you can app. You can use Apparo. Just you don't need to do. Oh, yeah. okay. And then just D. Uh, no, delete uh, the the dash. Okay. No, no, no space. Okay. Okay. So just maybe just SSH um, G5. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the list of known was this. Uh, so, but okay. So if you LS L. And then you, have you ever logged in? No, dash L, dash L. Then door SSH. No, no, door SSH. No, and then the space door SSH. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, idea is correct. So maybe it's not. So let me try. Um, Uh, okay, so you it seems uh, doesn't find your key. So can you send me in uh, DM me in Slack just your um, public key? Somehow it's not finding. Okay. Uh... Somehow I think when it's set up, it deletes all the SSH keys. So I will have to add all of your SSH. But in the meantime, you can. Um, Maybe you don't need to, so let me just see. You don't need to do that, so just don't worry. If you have already filled the form. Uh, yeah, I have. Will, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's because you mounted. OK, I will fix that. Um, so it, it needs to be. Okay, so Haptamu did it didn't feel so I'm gonna sorry about that. Uh, I will have to check that somehow. It's not finding those. Uh, no. So I, I will. I will fix after this call. But it's just a matter of that your SSH keys are not there. So it's uh, from our side. 
Okay. So, so shall I reach back after? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Okay, so sorry about taking the time on this, but I assume that now all the problems at least uh, well understood or otherwise that they are solved. Um, so then let's continue, Yvonne. Good morning, sir. So I have a problem. I currently cannot access my instance. It's telling me not found when I try to access it from the UI. Though if I try to access it from the terminal, I can I can also run my Jupyter notebook from the terminal. But when it comes to trying to run it on the local host, it is telling me not found. What, what is so like from mm, the local host? So. Uh, Can I just share is, my screen for you yeah, to see? I mean, in a way, okay, yeah, just uh, group, which group? Group four. Okay, so yeah, share your screen and then... Uh, okay, okay, just give me one minute. You can go to someone else as I try to share my screen, yeah. kindly. Okay. Yeah. So, but make sure your config more than anything. It's in, in your config that there is a forward. You're using the same ports that is forward there. So it that basically means there is local in your config. There is local forward, and then it was forwarding some number which normally is eight. As I was giving 80, uh, 80 19, and it was forwarding eight zero zero seven. Uh, Therefore, if that is not there, it might cause an issue. But just check that one and then just uh, make sure to prepare the config file as well when you share. OK. Um, then, so how are we in terms of the different tasks that we have? OK, so let's just one more solve this one and then we get. Yeah, so this doesn't matter. Like, I want to see the config. What um, the, the config. Do SSH config or you know the one that you configured to okay? So, okay. what are you using like your terminal? I want to see it from the terminal, okay? Okay, let me stop sharing this then. So, okay. so are you sharing or are you? just currently continue i'm trying to find it it's not appearing on my share window if you, if you have if you have, no, no if you just share your terminal so if you share just most of your screen it's easier to for us to tell you like what is what just the terminal is sufficient for everything okay so can you see my terminal yeah it's fine. okay so, so now can you exit from this like, oh, is that uh, your is that your local number yes. desktop? Okay. So yes. then if you just uh, ls dot ssh ls space space dot ssh. Okay. So and then inside a slash. No, no, you don't need to uh you just say slash. nano or cat C A T C A T space dot ssh slash config. Okay, so then you have four widget. No, can you now SSH? G4. Yeah. SSH? G4, yeah. Okay, now go to your browser. Mm -hmm. And then just localhost. Yeah, right there, yeah. Localhost 80, 
than 19. Here. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. It's coming. It's somehow you 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 type something. So again, just localhost. Right, not there. Like oh, so you, it's not comma or not space. It's localhost colon. No. So just go go with this up to the end, and then delete eighty to uh, ninety. Aye. So there is. A, so if you just continue, accept it, and then eighty nineteen. So colon. Don't this, forget this to. One. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure if that is it has colon or semicolon. I'm not sure. It has a colon, to... full colon. Okay, okay. So then uh, that one. If I click it, it will give me this tab. Exactly. So that's a, that. That means that it's not a local host. It's something. Um, okay. So HTTP. Can you just do HTTP local also like this? HTTP. So I, I just type this. You can click this one, like on the Google Jimmy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, you can just click on it. Okay, some at least this is um. If you go to your terminal. So I, I, is that how, how do people okay so if you scroll up can you scroll up just uh, okay so it's eight zero zero seven and nineteen okay maybe just can you um, like do this one uh, the other one that I'm sending you okay. So somehow I think your yeah something is uh, so can you use VS Code? Um, no, it's still the same same issue. If I use VS Code, it is telling me that G four is not found. The host is unknown, so I can't access it from VS Code. Okay, so it, it, it seems just that when you SSH, it's not being directed. That the the part there is not directed. Because if I do the same, then I will get exactly like with your name, I can log in from my. Um, I'm just trying to understand what it could be. Just let me try. Yeah, it's true. It's actually not found. Ah. Okay, then it must be here. So don't worry, just wait. 807. Most likely here. There's something strange here. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, so let, let's, let me look into it uh, later because it seems it's, um, that your IP is not being forwarded from the machine. So, okay, <clears throat> I will look into it. Okay, so okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, good that I reproduce your error at least. It's the same, it's not found. And um, so we'll check. <clears throat> okay, good. Um, so just going faster because we are already almost time um, for what we want to do, but let's just be faster and focus. So where are we in terms of first is understanding? Like, so for example, just from tasks last yesterday, we want to understand how, <clears throat> what is that training, you know, uh, look like just from the model perspective, from the fine tuning perspective, what makes sense? What is, you know, um, what is, the common sense way of training and what are we doing and where are we specifying uh, for example which layers are we specifying which uh, all of that just understanding one structure the other one was for embedding perspective the other one was from data perspective the overall data that we have and uh, knowing how much it is and then as well um, anything else that was assigned so maybe just group two was the starter yesterday so do you want to start again on the modeling where we are and how far have we updated and uh, have we come in terms of understanding that and then anyone of course by group two i mean anyone within every group that has been assigned also contributing to this part where are we do we have a better understanding today and you don't have to be it doesn't have to be group to anyone can start so, or is there confusions? Are there questions at least? Can we phrase it in terms of either question or, you know, explanation? Is everyone with me? Sorry, uh, I got disconnected. What was the question? So the question is the starting, like this, the discussion yesterday, we wanted to know how much progress have we made in terms of understanding the modeling aspect of it? You know, what are we doing when we try to fine tune? And what does make sense, for example, to, to, to fine tune when we start from Gary Morel and we try to fine tune? What are we doing? <clears throat> okay. So yesterday we uh, started to understand the code. Uh, we were trying to change the directors, etc. And then the the SSH fails. Uh, then we stop from there. Uh, but we have tried to manually work count token etc. Uh, I think we have that information for you today. As of that, we, we we didn't try. I mean, we haven't experimented much on it. Uh, but so now, when, when did when did I mean? I'm I'm sorry that. I was not able to attend uh, to your issue earlier, but okay. So any other group? Uh, so on the tokenization, when we come to tokenization, that would be on the data, we will talk about that. But from a modeling perspective, does everyone know now what are they, you know, when they write the code, <clears throat> do they understand what they're doing uh, in terms of, you know, what are they fine tuning? For example, if you want to start fine tuning on top of uh, the Gary model, do you know exactly, you know, what you need to do and what makes sense? I think if you don't, at least do you have question? You know, it's not, it's not just that you have to know only, but do you have question? If you don't have question and if you don't know, then that means you really was not looking into it. So I'm, I'm just, you know, help me here. What is the, you know, either phrase it as the question, or let's uh, explain it if you have understood or if you don't understand. Yeah, Binium. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can hear you. Okay, so um, yesterday we had some issues with the SSH, but we have actually trained the uh, models. We trained the vanilla llama model. Uh, on the unstructured data, we somehow found out a way to, you know, train it without uh, facing uh, space issues for the first time. 
on 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 a structure when on our own data and the results were not that satisfactory and uh, yeah we are still old uh, i am confident to say that we are now able to train any kind of data on yeah, so and, could, you, could you could you show us like you know what results do you got and what results for example one can get for the same thing with gary um as well as with just the base you know llama without any fine tuning could we have that um, information okay so yeah um actually the research is not connecting for some reason so i'm not really sure how to show you i'm actually joining from my phone but i will try to show you but uh, it's not really that satisfactory to be honest uh, the data is about like 314 rows of data. Um, it kind of hallucinates and repeats some words when you know when we when we so, try so to. Which, which group it. is that? It? It's group one, right? Yeah, it's group one. So uh, yeah, but uh, I'm sure the Gary model is better than ours since uh, what they demonstrated on their. Um, uh it it has an instruct data set too so i think that's why it's better than ours so ours is just unstructured it just outputs some amharic that's it for now so i think it will be better when we no i'm actually sure it will be better if we tune it with further instruction on the add on a label data Okay, so I'm just trying to see why why you are unable to log in. Uh, yeah, it just it just says cannot establish connection to G1 time now. Mostly we had similar issue yesterday, but let, let me just log in from another route. It says the folder does not even exist. Yeah, I think for some reason it, it's even maybe is completely because it's healthy and everything is fine. It's just if it doesn't log in, it's mostly because it's either full space, that means no nothing space left, but even that sometimes is easier to know. I actually or, deleted some modems. Yeah, but it's like okay so i have a question yeah. question about uh um when trying to work with the gary model i think they only released the adapter models after they trained on the on the, on the with the model that they released on, on hugging face so for groups who did this do we have to you know merge the adapter models to the base model in order to see a better output or do we just load it normally because it's like 300 megabytes or something it's so small yeah um yeah so you'll be uh, using the paste model that from pre-trained and you'll give both the, the base model and the adapters and that will basically uh, add the parameter of the llama the base llama so that you'll be able to then in, uh, infer run inference on the model so uh, uh, using only the adapters i don't think it will work you will need to use both the base and the adapter Binyam, basically. Yeah, I, I mean, I, so that's, I think that's correct, right? So that's the, you need both models because they are not merged um, to be able to put them. And I think my, my, my maybe Abdul Hamid was- Hello, uh, the voice is kind of cutting around. I cannot hear anything. 
We can hear you. It's breaking. So do you hear us? Let me just then. Binia may you may have internet connection issue. So um okay, so is there any, anyone from that group that has who knows? Yeah, Elias. Hello. Yeah. Elias. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yesterday we managed to train with some steps, uh, and uh, we have some additional adapters. Uh, as Vini was saying, we didn't manage to merge it yet with the base model uh, because we can't access uh, the our instance kept uh, uh, going out. I don't know why, but we managed to train it with. Uh, he was trying with, I think, uh, lower data set, but I was trying with uh, around the training data set was around uh, 44,000 or rows. And the uh, evaluation uh, around, I'm not uh, accessing the remote server, that's why I'm not sure about the number, but uh, we managed to train it with those, uh, with like 10 steps. And we, uh, the final, I think the uh, training loss, the final is 1.09, I think, yeah. And the validation loss was 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, uh, the thing <laughs> that I want to ask, and it's not clear about me, is uh, while working on PEFT uh, with LoRa, is, am I audible? Yes, you are, Elias. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, about the layers, I know we are free. Uh, we are working on some uh, with the, this dropout parameter. We are working on some percent of the parameters, and with the module parameter, we are working on some modules. But I'm not sure. Are we freezing them all and uh, adding some adapter and merging with the base model? I'm not. It's not. Yeah. It's not. All so clear that, about the that, that is a good question. That, that's the type of question I wanted to be asked. So that's good. So who can answer this? So that's a very good question. It's like if we understand what we are doing in terms of when we train, what are we doing? What are the adapters? You know, what are the base models? How are they interacting? You know, how do we specify? What are we adapting to? You know, if we understand that, it gets clearer for us also to, to be smarter what to do next. So the, the part, the request contribution that I wanted yesterday for today to be clear is this one. One of them is exactly, you know, which parts are you, the adapters are mirroring or improving? Or, you know, what are they doing in part? Do we have a clear understanding? I mean, even if people have a guess, that's fine. Or if they have more question, then let's ask it. Because I mean, I can, I can now. I mean, I, I went through the documentation and I, I have an understanding. But I wanted to see because if I just say it, it's sometimes not gonna be clear. So if we have either through questions or explanations, it gets easier. So can we try a few more? Just our understanding. What is you know. If we want to, for example, train on top of the Gari model, what, we, what do we need to do? And if we want to improve just a part of the Gari model, what do we, what do we need to do? Do we have a certain understanding on that, or do we have a question? I mean, Brahan, yeah. Like my chag my chagbar is burning down. Can I say like that? Because it's like every time I try to run uh, the instance, it gets to break, it gets to reconnect, and then kill the kernel. But like I couldn't even see get to become get to reach to the results and evaluate what's happening in there. Are we achieving the accuracy or not? It's 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 literally killing it. And every time I try to run it, 
So I try to fix the things that I've missed and then uh, try when loading the model, I use the quantization and it, every time it's not working, when I try to run it locally or in Google Colab, it kills it again. Um, I don't I don't know what I can do about it, but at the end of the day, okay, so I'm which talking group, about Which group is that? So which group working, is that? Group three. More, more on focus I was working on. You were not able to connect to the instance? No, it connects to the instance, but every time I try to run it, it gets to kill the process. Okay. And do you know get to get... Hmm? what what is does anyone know? Because I mean some people really train it without a problem. Are you yeah. is that just a I'm just, I'm just using I'm just I'm just using Lama 2, 7B. Mm -hmm. And um, in any ways, I tried to like I tried to do the the rack pack, but still uh, I couldn't use the Gari model because I was I was trying to use like an early VAG one. We we were using the embedding which is OpenAI embedding. So um, I you said yesterday to try that out also. So when I tried when I try to use that, I, I get to face like the API is not working. So I send a message for Fikrta, but still she hasn't responded yet. But I've, I've already written the code. It's, it already exists, so it's just trying it out if, when the API arrives. But when 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 I'm trying to use the Gary model for this, it's not gonna get it because the embedding at the end of the day, it, it, it's inside of the um, Hugging Hub embedding, and in that it it only works for sentence transform models inside of that sentence transformers, which means models which support that sentence transformer will be embedded. So there's a list of those models that I can try out. So I was trying to change those different models and then how they actually do retrieve, but it's not satisfying enough in a way that we wanted to. Sometimes it just retrieves unrelated things. And like the Gary model is a better one for sure for this case, but I literally don't know how to how to use it as embedding and how to use it as in a, in a retriever way connected with the hugging hub yeah okay uh, i mean i'm, I'm sorry to hear about the 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 model and is there anything other people do that train especially group two they don't seem to have an issue uh with respect to just loading and running uh, mubarak Okay, uh, we are uh, when we uh, ran it didn't fail. Uh, I don't know what happened to Brahan. He is working on the rug. I mean, I think he wants just to even load and infer. It doesn't seem. Uh, it doesn't seem it's working for him. It just seems he says the machine fails or something fails. So in a way, what could it be? Is, is you know i think that we're not i mean i i want to say this we're not using everyone's if like if one person solves in principle it's not a matter of like you know we could really ask that person to come and uh to get in a video call and and try so it probably you know of course this frustration really is annoying because you want to do something else and you are fixing something else you know which is which is not the, the point in principle, this issue, it's not an infrastructure project. The infrastructure should be there and you should just load and it's possible that you can load it. And then at least from what you need to, what you should have worked more or supposed to be is on understanding the model and on finding a good way to get there. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what, because if you can SSH and there is a GPU, and then you can load it just like others. So I don't know what could be the reason. Um, yeah, so maybe... For the part, when we load uh, the model, it, it works. And when we, we run uh, even the training, uh, it successfully completes. But as Elias uh, mentioned it, when we try to uh, merge in that load, uh, we have an issue. And uh, I told Nathaniel and he uh, suggested me, so and we are going to try that. Okay. This is from the yeah. training side. Okay. So, and, and I think, but your question, Brian, other than just that part, 
that doesn't work is very good in terms of how do you then use um, Gary model as as your embedding right so and do people have an answer okay yeah yeah and then Nasrallah. Yeah, yeah. okay uh, I think uh, last week we had the same problem it just killed it because of the memory uh, and it doesn't tell you even it's it's a problem of memory uh, so later what we did is we create a, a common folder uh, for the uh, llama and the Gary model and then we call them from there and then when we use the quantization uh, it starts to run for the the, the supposedly uh, pre-training uh, yeah. yeah so it, it's the uh, if it feels it, it it's related to memory yeah are you uh, quantizing brahan were you quantizing were you leading also with quantizing with qlora yeah but i think i get they were they were working on on the common folder but i tried to create the separate folder and then try to run i think that that's that's the problem i feel like that so uh i will i'll try it on the common folder yeah. they've already created that but yeah it, it's not and, 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 to it every model such. you load it's like very huge and as at some point you may run out of also CPU. And so you also need to talk to your groups to know if they're using another model to load in the CPU, you, can't, you don't have enough CPU. You know, first you have to load it into the CPU and then you move it to the GPU. So, you know, it's it's just, this is not work, individual work. You have to really align with the group that one is doing what is needed to be done and the other one probably does something else and then the other person continues. Otherwise, you know, it's it's if it was an individual CPU, then you can debug because you are the only one user. But here, you know, if two people are trying to load models into the CPU and then the GPU, it doesn't work. So yeah, we we lit we literally sync every minute. So I will, I will, I will. if that is the case, I mean, absolutely great. So then it's a matter of maybe you know check with the commands that I sent as well, just the disk space normally the disk space and then you can also use edge top for example and um, now i think i am in your in t3 now if i do edge top then i will know how much memory it's used you know you are using only 11 gigabyte of the 32 you know the 31 gigabyte available so that means you don't have a at least for now you don't have an issue and i know that carrot is running therefore probably if you need more like for example, if it doesn't fit, I think it will fit in this one. But if it doesn't fit, then you might ask Kero to, you know, close some of your instances. And normally, what you do that, <coughs> sorry. So for example, <coughs> you can use HTOP <coughs> to look at the processes. And if, for example, Kero says like, no, I'm not running anything. Then there are lingering tasks that are there. Then you can kill all. Then Kerod, right? So, um, so something um, with that kind of like, I'm just gonna. Um, so his username, like somebody's username, like here. Again, this command sometimes they can be abused. So you you must really synchronize, otherwise you can kill somebody's work, and you know it's not good so that is that should not be the case but if you are synchronizing that's good because then sometimes some tasks are lingering and taking memory ram space you can kill them uh, clean them and there are many ways to clean your your ram as well but <clears throat> what i'm saying is that you should almost always first check your gpu ram your cpu ram and then see if it's not an issue and in principle it should work like therefore there is no other reason it doesn't work um okay i get to see that but still on the on the um, rack part it's, it's still it's, it's a big of a challenge yeah. and like yeah so i mean how do, how do we i think you have a good question and i hope some people would also try to answer that how do we use gary for example for embedding um so let's see I think this is, but I think everyone by now should should understand. I mean, after this discussion, it should be clear what we are doing, what is adapters doing, and what is merging, and you know uh, where do we select 
So from that perspective, at least it's clear. And the next phases are, okay, how do we then use the embedding? How do we fine tune the embedding itself? And all that then to the structure. And then how much data do we have? And how do we instruct? So all of those were tasks yesterday. So let's hear from them. And by the end, hopefully everybody is clear what's the next step. As well as group one, your SSH is working, it seems to me now. Um, so I'm just trying it as well if uh, it works from here. It seems not from here, from the roots I am able. Um, Okay, so this alias should work. The final alias should work. Now all should work. Uh, yeah. So in principle, it should work. Then, then if I use this, uh, you're using eighty-seven percent, but you have twenty-seven percent, uh, twenty-seven gigabyte available, so it should work. There should not be a problem, um, but unfortunately, it seems that I am unable to log in from just SSH. And let me check if that is because of, yeah, that's because of the, I started it from the part that I have to change. Yeah, you should be able to Don't understand why. So let's um, 
it's working. It's strangely there is maybe it's just because of permission issues that with the IP it works. So your IP is so instead of for now um, instead of just using the host in the host instead of G1 dot uh, 10 Academy org group one if you use just for now this one it should not be the case just only temporary you should almost always use the URL but this works somehow by the IP it works somehow it's maybe just my DNS server somewhere is not uh, routing it but the IP works so that's just at least that's the case okay so yeah yeah where you um I'm just starting <laughs> doubt about the 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 rug uh, i mean uh are we actually experimenting on the rug uh using which embedding uh, which llm uh, a, a lot of questions came to my mind when everybody is talking about the rug uh, i thought we going to uh fine tune the the model and once we have the model we will uh, start putting it into the rug. But for now, we just have a skeleton, uh, like uh, creating the vector database and retrieving uh, context from the, uh, the, uh, the vector database. And then uh, we will include that with the LLM we uh, fine tune. And then we will use the prompt to get the, uh, the, the ads. Uh, so, how are you guys experimenting with RAG? Uh, that's a big question for me. Sorry. Thank you. So, Hello? Um, yeah. yeah. I think it's, I, I'm not sure if, I mean, the question is like, of course, there will be, once you have the, once you have the trained model, then yeah. you will be able to, to do the rug. Yes. Yeah. And then, or you can use currently still test as it was written. You should test also using like other models that are, could be capable, for example, GPT. So that's what Brahan was asking that he doesn't have API key. It's for OpenAI such that he can try the Amharic rug on OpenAI GPT-4 models, because they also, they understand as well. So they, I mean, GPT has a better understanding than many open models for Amharic. So using that, using them. Okay, but it's not related to our model. I mean, what do you mean? No yeah, it's, well. it's, not, it's not that they, they fine tuned and finished and using that. Partly they want to test that. So partially, for example, if you have the Gari model, if you fine tune, like currently you only embed words in Gary model, but mm -hmm. you can do sentence transformation as well by just doing, you know, there are many ways to send create sentence transformation from current Gary's model, Gary's embedder, right? Yeah. By just fine tuning it. And therefore you could do just only the aspect of that as well. So in a way, you can create just only for purely classification and other tasks in Amharic, you could use the Gari model and add on top of it, um, mm -hmm. you know, a sentence transformer. Uh, and that basically means you do some kind of averaging, some kind of pooling layer, you add an, another mm -hmm. adapter, and then you use that one as your Amharic embedder. Yeah, that's, so that, that's, that's what I thought. Yeah, of course, so yeah. That is the way. Like, if you want to use open models, you have to create your own sentence yeah. transformation, embedding, etc., etc. Yeah, so, that's for just experimenting. Yes. So the other one is for because you need a baseline. Almost always, you don't need to do one thing because you don't know how good or bad it is unless you have a baseline. And our GPT is our baseline. GPT as well as the the base Llama model is our baseline. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, right. Brian, is that a question or uh, explanation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, question. For, uh, it's like, yeah. basically, it's, it's going to be different in a way. In earlier last week project, we did, we, we actually use OpenAI for everything, which means yeah. 
for the embedding and then also basically we need rag in a way will it improve the generated content right so with with rag and without rag is there any literal diff output difference so that's what what we need but in this case what what we are using is like we we are using transformer some of some transformer at the end of the day it's going to be transformer model and then with the hugging face and i'm trying using it at long chain it does it doesn't matter what you're using but it's it's basically the um, the and and, and the, i, the I don't know what what you mean by that it doesn't matter but i, I understand you mean one that is suitable yeah you can use anything so no, anyways, no, no, anything. I mean, what, what does it mean anything that's the whole point <laughs> okay so it's not anything but it's the tool that works for you, you can exactly so the one that you're going to that understand samaric you use it yeah, so a transformer that has an understanding of Hamaric. So that model, but like, like the, the question is like, will it improve the, the, the output? Like in earlier scenarios, the, that's the actual relevance of having that rug, giving it a more context and get to have a better prompt or not prompt actually output. So uh will it will it will it do that in a hamaric case is like a really tough thing but because we get to the question of back does it really understand amharic uh, and also when i when i get to I, like, I, this I, I, I don't know i think this is maybe confusing for others as well so it has to be clear the question i mean hmm. what do you mean it's like it's very simply we are talking okay. i mean llms they, they might okay. be complex but they're very simple simple objects but, they understand the structure in a certain language they understand fundamentally what language is, and then from that language, they might be bad or good for a certain language. Now, the certain language means that, you know, the vocabularies and the tokens and their relationships. So, yes, element, basically, okay. whatever transformation you, you, you transform, model, you think it's basically how much the weights, we're talking about the weights and the weights having that relationship built in or not. Now, LL Lama or any other model that is just a vanilla model, is not capable of understanding we have tested it or you can taste it that it's not it's gonna give you garbage you know garbage stuff like it's not really making sense okay it's, it's okay characters, it's not okay and if, now, we're raising this, if we're yeah. raising this question let me ask one thing uh do, do you really believe the model what we're gonna build right now is gonna give an output an amharic which is meaningful in a sentence meaning wise yes. let's say when it generates a text in english it, it knows what's generating the, the it doesn't content know. Is, it doesn't it's meaningful know. it no it, it, has, it has a better it. it has a better understanding of the it's language let's say it, morphology it, more data. it has hmm? seen more data let's talk about not feelings but it has seen more data and mm -hmm. and therefore it does good yes so in a way but, i think it's, you know, remove your yourself and your judgment from and then puts what, why, and the reason why it works for English is because it has seen more English. And the reason uh, why we want to do more Amharic, like we want to give it more Amharic so that it sees. Now, Gary has given more Amharic to it, and we are also trying to give it more Amharic. And, and therefore, in principle, it will do better than what it was before, right? So now it will do better than what it's before. And if we give it more, more, more Amharic, it will do well better like it could be even if we give it more amharic than english it will perform much better for amharic than english there's nothing there about it right so it's just about the data what if about it's uh, what i'm talking about is like creating the better understand meaning wise in, in natural language processing we like the, to the tokenization is one one more thing like and then having those root words and then the the understanding the actual morphological meaning of the words and then like we, yeah, we also so that's have, data like, does that's it, for the data does it understand the semantic does it understand the pragmatic meaning yeah, all yeah. these things at the end data. of the day is going to matter when it generates a new output right yeah but so i mean I, i'm i'm saying are you saying exactly what i'm saying it's just data we don't have enough data or what what are you saying because it's just about data you're we're not inventing anything we're just we have data and we want to give show it data and that's all that matters and small data doesn't show it much you know doesn't help it much i mean it, it makes it better but not better as as good as english for example but it's better so or or your question is different because it has nothing got to do with amharic language as per se 
it can be you know another language let's say uh, xyz language and it's all about how much data it has seen in that language because the weights are basically updated based on what they have seen so whether it's morphological whether it's a complex language a small simple language it can be just a very tiny simple language or a complex language it all matters about data right are we in that in the same page or if it's not then i think these maybe your question might relate to other questions other people so you can rephrase it again if that is not what you are also thinking i think that's it okay but i mean does that answer your i mean in a way it's not about argument it's about like yeah. do we have a common understanding does that make sense yes because I, sense. ultimately what i really want is people to judge something and say like yes this doesn't make sense and this makes sense right so these two things right so I, it, it is not about anything else it's about does this make sense or that doesn't make sense and if we are okay. able to distinguish that then we can go further but if we're okay. just only uh, so so if this makes sense to you that means that you know what matters mostly for our case is just the amount of data what i'm saying is like it's not only about data the problem is not about data that, that's that's what i'm trying to say because does it really have like in a way like when we give the data in a way are we giving it that it can understand it and have a have a better meaningful things let's say we give it a lot of more of data like let's say we don't have millions of data right now let's assume we have millions of data for sure it will have a better output it will generate a better text uh, contents let's say but will it will it generate in a way which which doesn't actually exist in the data set and it's being created by it and then it's meaningful yeah. yes it, it will but, you know that's, that's a real question yes for me yeah it does and i can i can only tell you a point you was for with done on different research so your question is not even dependent on amharic it's just on any other language right so it it is not and, and so they have seen they have done a lot more research and it actually it it is interpolation you know if you if you think of interpolation interpolation actually creates between two things if you are interpolating between two things then a new the function itself if it's good then thinks spaces that it has not seen before and there are many many examples i'm not advocating here llms rule the world and they are you know super intelligent and, and all that i'm saying for all practical purposes that we need they do well and they actually create a new content that a new music that that you can consider it's because of interpolation. So that means you can take somebody's voice and add it on somebody's face and make the other person speak in another. So that's that has never seen it. But because they have seen that voice and they have seen a person face and then they have seen a person speak, so you know they can interpolate. So then it makes, and then for you, for us, for humans, it's indistinguishable from actually recording the other person speaking in that voice so things like that so that means it is not about a thing but it's for all practical purposes it does it does well and it, it creates something novel and it has been seen so this is more of a philosophical layer of argument and it's not about you know how we think but for all practical purposes that you need now it's it's relevant and for amharic it could be just that relevant as well to write the next poem or to write to write the next advertisement um with just given enough data and some you know strategy that is the premise let's say okay yeah does that can yes. we leave it there okay so just so yes. that it's a philosophical argument so but what is what is more important is that practically it can do that and it has been it's doing that for others so it should do that for us it's not that different okay fun with uh, hi everyone can you hear me hi. yeah uh, so uh, i had a question about the uh, gari model i yeah. mean it's not for you it's uh, for yes uh, team 
So you were talking about comparing models and you know trying to choose which model is better. And since we need to query Gary models too, like have they actually? I mean, they did download it and you know, are looking at the code, but are they able to query it and get some results so that you know we can use it as a reference point for other models also? And another question is, if it is about data and the more data it has and the more it consumes, like it, it gives better model, why haven't we worked with Gary model to begin with? Uh, like it seems like since they have trained it, you know, with more Amaric data, it would have been a better choice, you know, to yeah, progress it, that regard. That's true. That's why we want to, but we also want to see other models, how they're, you know, they all have, like, the same as we want to see on uh, GPT, like in OpenAI, and we want to see Mistral, we want to see on others how bad or good they are. So that's exploration. Mm -hmm. And definitely, of course, the Gary model, given that it has more Amharic, it might perform well, we expect, but it might not even, maybe maybe OpenAI has more, right? Uh, so, yeah. So, so, like, I mean, would it be, like, a better choice, like, you know, to focus on the uh, Gary model? I mean, if we were just alone, yes, but this is a group work. So mm -hmm. we need to explore. More understanding is better than just sometimes doing one thing that just only seems to, you know, it's, you, you, we're not gambling only with one model. We want to see how others perform so that we know how good Gary model is in, in effect. Oh, so it's a, sort of like a test? Or, yes, you know, they, uh, it's a comparison. And we might find something that that actually works better than Gary maybe. Huh, okay. So it's, I mean, it's, it's that a, element. A, yeah. I'm just saying, like, if you're looking for, you know, results, like, I think that would be the yeah. best bet. But we know yeah. some is working on Gary model, so we will get a result. Okay. So that's the whole point of being a group than individual. If I were to work on it myself, then I would definitely start on Gary model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, since, I mean, only one group is focusing on it and with more resources. I think it worked for them mm -hmm. earlier, and therefore, I think everyone was trying. Just that it worked for yeah, them. Earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's just that then they were able to go further. Okay. So I think uh, Abdul Hamid shared one, and you can see um, that in their mo in basically this is from Gary model Abdul Hamid, without any fine tuning. Yeah. Yeah. This is the inference from the Gary model. Yeah. So it, you know, as you can see, that it is it is doing well. Now you can ask the same question in in GPT. Uh, in a chat GPT and see if it performs better or worse. And it, it oh, is I, that. I, I, yeah, I've tried that. It's gibberish. Like, it doesn't understand anything. Yeah. So I'm just going to try and then copy for the same um, thing. What would. Yeah, so it's, as you said, it's slightly, it's not only slightly. Again, um, but if I type in Amahari, then I might... Um, I think it would be worse. Well, because like, I don't think uh, it understands this word. Uh, is the prompt in English or in Amharic? Uh, it's in English. Uh, we find it it performs better with uh, prompting it with English. Okay, thank you. So, so here is I'm just going to, so for exactly the same question uh, that 
uh, in English that was I only even specified it has to answer in Amharic so and then it answered this one and then if I just type the same like a question for in Amharic so for example so this is for those who who are, at least the question is exactly you understand it it's the what medicine should I take if I have a flu and then I typed the uh, like so let me just this was the question in Amharic that I said I, I gave it and then uh, this is So this is the answer. So again, for those people who don't understand Amharic, it, it means uh, it is not really doing well. While the Gari model, what, um, uh, what Abdul Hamid posted actually is really to the point, okay? So while the other, for example, the one that I got from OpenAI, it does, the words are correct. They are actually make sense, but they it talks about, uh, some history and then some politics and medicine combined uh, something that doesn't really make sense so so that basically seems gary model maybe you can ask it also in amharic and it probably might answer an imra oh so the amharic actually was not making sense i i just realized now when I uh, it does not i mean the sentence wise it doesn't make any sense the words are correct somehow i don't know i know i mean no i'm just yeah even if i correct now i mean also my question was wrong so that's why i i corrected my question just to make sense at least so now i ask it um what what medicine uh, is there for a flu and the answer hasn't changed much, uh, even if I correct it now, my mistake. Um, yeah, so nothing nothing makes sense. So I think Gary Morel seems to be doing okay. Now, okay, so I think we're, we're not answering that, uh, again, what is really the, the direct answers. Do we understand? Or, okay, maybe Nasrallah, you were, were you, uh, I was using OpenAI, so basically, uh gpt4 no gpt3 point chat 3.5 let me try actually gpt4 and then ask it so I, I was not realizing that i was using so maybe chat gp gpt4 might be doing well that was a good question oh wow gpt4 really does actually well So, so at least it, it, for the first part, it was good. I'm just going to show. So it's, I'm just going to. So just some, some part is like that. So that is the, if I ask it in Amharic, which again, for those people who don't speak Amharic, this is, it's fine. Actually, it seems to make sense to understand the problem slightly better than 3.5. And it actually lists some medicines that are useful. Uh, even if sometimes it's slightly, um, yeah. But if I now ask it in English for the same thing, Thank <laughs> you. 
it's even better i think as uh, it even lists in It's much, much, much better. It's even the formats, maybe the Google might not. So if you look at this one, the one now I sent, it actually has listed, these are the types of medicines and, um, you know, and this and that and that. So it actually recommends. So, So this is correct. So I mean, GPT-4 seems to be doing well um, and maybe comparable or I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the actually, I think it's still maybe the Gary seems to be doing well, still comparatively, maybe. It's just, uh, we have to we have to test it well. Um, but that that demonstrates okay so group C like I have seen so is there any contribution that people have made compared to the tasks that I have taken yesterday groups have taken yesterday we we group two we really haven't been able to uh, proceed that much like because our instance was down we couldn't do that much. Um, that's our update. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully now you are connected, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Rudolf? Yes, to answer your question, uh, we didn't do much yesterday also because of the, uh, the connection issue with the server. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Indeed, I would like to ask a parallel question to the to the server. Um, yeah. I have removed uh, my data, but I'm uh, when I check the memory I'm using, I still have a, have a, a lot of uh, space that I'm using. So I check with uh, LLS uh, LS uh, space half L, and I realize uh, and the A, and I realize that I have some uh hide the files so shall i clean all of them yeah i mean i, I think yeah whatever you you don't need like you once you identify the folder you can actually use just remove rf that folder name oh so, okay but uh what is that? Oh, this it? one i'm just typing you know then it, it can down it can erase it for you uh, but really make sure that the, the path, whether it's a file or, you know, it can be a single file or it can be a folder, this remove RF would work and that basically cleans it. So you will not recover it back. So only delete the ones that you don't want. Okay. okay. Uh, for instance, uh, in, the in the hide one, I have, I have, I have uh, VS Code server, uh, Jupyter. Yeah. It, um, that should not, I mean, that should not VS code, just the dot VS code, whatever. I don't think they, they are that large. I think the only large things are more models. Some, some places you have model that's there. Otherwise it should not, you should not bother about it. They are just a, a few megabytes or a few gigabytes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Thank you. Okay. So if you can uh, say something about comparing or evaluating the fine-tuned model, that would be appreciated because how, we, how do we know that the fine-tuned is good enough 
in generating the texts. Yeah, yeah, okay. So is there any, just before I, I mean, I, I will just then go over the things that yesterday um, um, we asked and some of them I just went to just do the research and identify where things are and then also what, you know, what makes sense to train and uh, to estimate. So, but is before that, I mean, at Nail also you probably have understood some um, on the data we, we, we took, so you can follow. But before that, is there any update from any group? Because I, I saw Nas Nasrallah had a, a raised hand, but then um, I couldn't see it anymore. Is that just means your questions answered? And is that the case? From group six, we didn't hear much. Okay, so anyone from group six who wants to say, or just then shall we continue? Okay, so then I will continue. Um, so do you see my screen? So I don't hear, so I assume it's yes, okay. Um, Okay, so it, the, the most important part is just to understand, especially for these all the cases that they are using uh, in these adapters. So there are many types of uh, parameter fine, parameter efficient fine tuning. But the most that we would that, that they use is LoRa, right? So and you are using LoRa uh, as well. And if we understand exactly the mathematics or just small thing what we are doing, then we understand everything uh, from training perspective. And what actually LoRa does uh, is very simple. It takes actually the whole model. This is the whole model weights. So you can select which model weights uh, later just in the code, they, they show it as well. So that basically at first you can assume it can take every other, every weight that is in the model. And normally um, transformers have very simple layers. There are the basically the, um, the the weights is with respect to the attention the multi head mask attention and then there is there are on top of that there are, there are the linear transformers like basically the, the linear layer uh, that then puts everything into the dictionary and then uh, as well as the full connection so if we just go um, um, So yeah, so if we look, these are just the different layers, right? So the, the multi-head attention, then add in normalization, and then the feed forward, this is basically a full um, uh, connection. That basically means uh, that everything, the output of this would be connected, um, and it's called a full, full layer, or just for now, like, so this allows us to convert whatever is here into... Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We can't see your mouse, or is it a oh, different okay. screen you're on? It's oh. a different screen, okay. Uh, okay, so I uh, now you can see, right? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so basically these are the different layers and these have, of course, n times. In, in the original, it's six times, and you can just check, for example, if it's llama, how many layers of this they have. And, and then there is, of course, the embedding layer, if it's being trained together, or probably you can add your own embedded, like already a, a model that learns embedding, and so you can attach there as well, um, normally. And then these are the different layers. The feed forward layer within that would be the add the normalization, the attention uh, layers. So this is just the decoder only models. We'll use this one. And so you can think of all of, when we think of all layers or layers, we're talking about the attention layer or the feed forward layer or the linear layer, right? So the linear layer, basically, if you have in, in your model, if you have uh, 10,000 or 50,000 vocabulary, the linear layer is from whatever the embedding space 
translates it into that amount. So because it's just, uh, you know, its output would be 50,000, the vocabulary size, right? And then that's called logit. And, and then that basically is then soft answer. That means it gives you the probability of the next word in your vocabulary. So it's basically that 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 is what it is. So whenever we think of then, um, so here, here you can select which weights, but imagine just you can select whichever weights and put them there. And then you, you create a parallel matrix like that, that can be decomposed, that can be written like this. Here is the original, if you are, um, so this one, so this part where, so the, the WX is the original. So that's a pre-trained weight. And this other part is what you are trying to add, okay? Now, merging means exactly when, because XX is the same, then if you take them out and then you sum them together, that's called merging. Now, whether you understand maths, you don't understand maths, it doesn't matter. It just means you have the original and then you are trying to add, you know, you can consider this B the, BA as delta W. So that means whatever change you are giving. So if, you know, onto, onto the, the model weights. So this is almost always then, of course, fix it. And then you're training Ws, right? Or like this delta W or BA. That's how LoRa works. Now, once you know that, then it's very simple because then you can go into the LoRa parameters. Where do, what actually defines my model, right? Of course, the first part is R. R is basically the label, this one. So if this is, for example, 1024, R can be eight. And then therefore the multiplication, the amount of then weights reduced from one that, you know, normally this is even huge. Like it's probably, this can be, let's say one million, one billion, uh, one million, one, one million, this can be a billion, like so that uh, uh, 12, so it's actually almost one, yeah, 10 to the six, 12, 10 to the 12, so it's actually 100 billion, right? So, or actually it's trillion in that case. But this one R can be just 10. If it's 10, for example, or normally we, we use a four a multiple of two. So if it's just four, so this is 1 million times four, right? So that's what happens um, in, this, in this decomposition. So then you have only for a one, or almost a trillion, a billion, a trillion um, pre-trained weights, you might only use almost 2 million or 3 million um, weights to actually update them. So that's why what Laura was doing. So R basically really gives you that, that decomposition, that, that's a key parameter that reduces the parameters from a billion to a million or from a trillion to a million is exactly that, the choice of R. So that's an important parameter. And another important parameter is, um, is the one I was, what I was asking you, this is the target modules. So this is basically the modules that earlier, as I said, the transformer model is made up of modules. And therefore you can ask, you, and they are given which modules you wanna choose, whether you only just and, uh, use the attention layers or you can choose the other names by name. So this is how by name you are, by name you are defining. Uh, where am I? So, so this is where you define by name, okay? So, and then you choose again another thing, whether you include the bias or not, and, and then everything else. And then here is another one, just within the choice, you can also control which layers actually off from the listed target modules you wanna use. Um, and, and if the names of the, the, the layers are different, than the usual, so almost every model has a convention, but if it's different, then you can actually define the names patterns to be here. And this actually then specifies exactly, you can select which, which models, which uh, part of the weight you are actually fine tuning. And so, you know, by looking, for example, Garis, these layer patterns, target modules, you know which ones they, they do normally, this is basically the attentions, the attention blocks are what most people train. And now when you look at that, so um, this is basically, this specifies the entire thing. Um, and now let's imagine we want to add on top of 
Garis model, we actually want to add more data. So what do we do? We can actually merge the model, the Gari model. Here is the Gari model. Gari model is given as uh, basically as a uh, as a layer, right? So that basically you can get this uh, adapter and then add it to the original weight and you create a new model, a merged model. And then on top of that, if you train that the one that you are training, that you are creating BA can be actually considered as adding on top of, you know, modifying on top of it. Or, so that's one aspect, which probably might not be, at, but you just start from the, actually the BA from Gary and then increase or decrease based on, you know, your new data with the same parameters that's given there that also updates the BA now for starting from its own place. So that actually can also should work as well. Okay. So that hopefully gives you like what, how you choose model. And if you are trying to reuse and surgery the model, that actually helps. Okay. Magdes. Magdes. Okay. Yeah. I'm a group two and we use a Gary model. Yeah. And while fine tuning, he just, uh, I mean, it just, uh, select the updated parameters by identifying which parameters requires a gradient calculation. But I really don't understand what's mean a gradient calculation calculation for the parameter mean. I mean, it, it's basically simply uh, you don't have to understand the, the full terminology. It's like there is a, a feed for like a forward pass. That means that you show something and and then it, it computes something it, it predicts something it outputs something and then you have what is expected in that output so what what is the correct one right so even if it's unsupervised or supervised training you have what you know in unsupervised training the next word is you know the next word therefore you have the next word with you and then you have another prediction of the next word now you can take the difference between the two and then that difference, the delta difference, will be back propagated using derivative operators. So back propagation or gradient is means just that. So it's how you update the weights. You change them from value 0 0.1 to value 0 0.11. And how you do that is called gradient distance or grad, you know, back propagation or uh, gradient operator. So all you need to understand is that you compute you compute the difference and based on what is called a loss function, what you are trying to maximize or minimize. Normally, of course, the loss function is minimizing. And then you want to, you, the optimal, you choose the optimal way to update all models uh, based on, you know, that, that minimizes your loss. So this is just a technically, and if you understand it, it's fine. If you don't understand it, it just means, gradient means that. How you, pro, how you, you know, basically in a human term, if you ask, if I ask you a question, that's exactly what I'm doing. I ask you a question and based on your answer, I give you, you know, what, how to, the right answer. If you, if you, for example, are close, if you don't understand it, anything, then I will start explaining from the scratch. But if you understand many things, then I only tell you the small part. That's exactly what gradient operator. It's only just on the change that uh, it's actually teaching. Hopefully that's clear. Is yeah, that... it's clear. Okay. Uh, Kerot? Okay, so uh, it's actually interesting that we brought up this uh, topic because we are stuck on this uh, place on four days. So my question is, uh, we are working on the LAMA2 model and we are um, assuming that it has been pre-trained on, um, on Amharic la language prior to us using it. So we are just... Uh, fine tuning it and adding some layers so the problem is that uh when we try to merge it it's not m merging so how do we uh you, you should investigate what is the problem in merging because in principle merging is a very simple process it may be the memory to load everything might be heavy right because when you are merging you, you actually are going in all of the weights the corresponding weights and then add them and you do some metrics, multiple, you know, in, in, inside there, that's what it's doing. 
it does some matrix multiplication, then um, then sum between the two matrix, the, the original weight, and then the new the new weights that are the adapters when they are now multiplied with vector multi uh, with matrix multiplication, they get exactly the same twice the size. So when you merge, it means you have now W. If it has 40 billion parameters, it has 40 billion parameters. And then the other delta W, which also in principle should be 40 billion parameters. And then you add them together. Now, normally I assume they do it cleverly when they merge, but it may be just memory. So you have to check when merging, there might be techniques to reduce memory. Okay, we will look into that. Thank you. Yeah, okay, Mubarak. Uh, my question is, uh, can we get uh, a, an output from the new weight or uh, it is a must to have an output? We have to merge it. You have to merge it. I mean, you don't have to merge it. You don't have to merge it, but you, it has to merge ultimately. So that means that's what they call latency, right? So if you don't merge it, dynamically it will be merged. So that is what in this one that I am showing. So here is the output, right? The blue is the output from the pre-trained. And then the yellow, like the orange, is from the uh, now your adapter, the one fine-tuned. And then finally it's merged. So you can do this operation even at inference time. And it should work. So, but operating two things parallelly would take some more time. So when you actually merge them, then only the, you do only one operation. So for that reason, this is faster than this one. But otherwise it should work, even unmerged should work. Okay. Okay, Ten Academy team had uh, hands raised. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, as a comment uh, with the merging thing uh, when you are fine tuning, uh, just to uh, make sure that if you are um, changing the tokenizer, you have to uh, also ex like uh, when you're major, you are major, have to make sure that you 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 fix this, fix the size of the embedding basically when you're doing the merging. Yeah, I think every. every exactly every aspect of that change you have to know how it propagates right yeah. so it's an embedding layer and the embedding layer has it's expecting a certain you know each the pre-trained model has a, a, a particular uh, embedding space and it takes that one either you pad it so for example if you want to if you now change your embedding to a certain smaller extent then you have to maybe pad it to fit the original, uh, the pre-trained model, right? But you have to do something such that ultimately the, the two can be summed. So almost always think of them as um, the two must sum together. So whatever, yeah. now you change your embedding here and you change this one, then they can't sum. So either through padding or that, the two must be equal size so that ultimately they sum. Right. Yeah. So I, I was just uh, uh, pointing that because hugging face uh, does everything very automatically. It's very very helpful, but it doesn't do this automatically with yes. for for when you do this. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I understand. I understand your yeah. comments. So that's, that's why I'm explaining to others. That's yeah, yeah. why it's yes. exactly. Okay. okay. So now, do we have a clarity at least from the modeling perspective, or are there questions? So if I now ask from this, I want I want to get an answer. Yeah, we are choosing this layer, right? So this is what I want to for people to be able to, um, you know, just, I, I want to have that kind of understanding what we are trying to do. So later then you can go to the PIFT part and then you can do the reference or, you know, um, like basically like, uh, if you look at here, you should be able to understand many of the the parameters and the models and um i think there is one i want to show so if i do laura do i get no ah, so okay maybe just in the adapters so this is basically you know the adapters part um i'm just putting here as well Yeah. 
So you can get examples. There are many, many meters, but you can get, I think, examples here. It's maybe not. Um, yeah, so you can get all those references that you need to change on on um, on this page. So it's basically, if you just look at the documentation of Hacking Face, you know exactly what to change um, and what needs to be changed. So, okay, let me stop there. And I know that it's way over time. And maybe we can, so with this, I still haven't want to get if people understood exactly how they fine tune. Uh, for example, the embedding to, to have a sentence embedder from, uh, you know, to embed Amharic texts, like chunk of texts using Gary model, and that should be answered. How we do it should be answered. Um, as as well, I think the next part is the data. I think we can talk. I, I know that uh, Nathaniel use, was looking at that, so maybe we can come back later to it uh, because this is way over time. But so Ekram asked one question, um, something about the retriever component of the RAG system. So Ekram, it's just basically, you know, we need a good a good uh, embedding means when you write a text, it actually understands the semantics and the, the part so well that the structure concept, it, it has a semantic understanding of that text. Now, if you write that text completely in a different way, you know, with different words, but the same sentence, but same concept, it actually puts it closer. So we want a retriever that does that because when we, we keyword, it's not keyword, it's semantics. We don't want to look at, you know, you can think of the words to be labels and what they represent, the whole thing, the concept they represent, you can think of it a conceptual space. So the embedding basically is a conceptual space. Well, in concept, you want to relate two things the same. So even if one, you know, they have the same word, if they are different, if, you know, they have the different same word, but different concept, then we want them to be different because embedding is basically a conceptual space. I hope that that explains. So a retriever means to retrieve based on concepts more than based on words. And we want an embedding system that has that represents texts, chunk of texts, in a very well in a conceptual space. I hope that makes sense. Meron. Okay. Hi. The, hi. In my understanding, the Laura Pift, so this yeah. is all layers, layer weights in the model. Is it? Is it? What, what, what weight is? Uh, all models uh, layer weight. Yeah, yeah, it is normally, but you know, normally it's actually only the, the attention layers. So that means Q project, they, it's actually their name is usually re referred as Q project and V project. So that means all names that start with Q project, V project, that, that actually means in a, you know, in, in, in a sense, that means this one. So the Q and the V project. So these are, these, the weights, you know, how the Q and the V as are predicted are using weights, they are called WQ or, you know, WV. So these weights, in all of the layers, in all of the, the the layers, but only the Q and the V. So normally they are, that's what they call the attention layers. And mostly Laura can actually usually use them. But of course, in principle, it can use all layers, all of the layers and all of the weights. But, some, but most of the time the custom is to fine tune, to reduce parameter further, to only uh, fine tune only the attention weights. Okay. Yeah. My question: How can we select the layer? By name, Q project, V project. Okay. You, you know the names. So if you, I think some of um, thing I probably don't have them here now open. Um, yeah, you can basically select. Uh, if you some tutorials, you can actually get how they select. Um, if I if I have here, maybe just. Q project. 
in this case that's not there but yeah you, you can see some examples they actually specify um which which adapter you know which layers using that earlier what i showed so in the configuration you where is laura so um you would choose for example so this is the adapters so yeah so maybe just it's here target modules right so here it only lists all linear we can't see your screen Abby. okay I, I... so i mean I, i'm still sharing that the lora reference um in hugging face so you know it, when you when you specify in lora config the target modules you can list which ones right in this case only chooses all linear but in others you might choose you know some other just q projection or b project so only the attention layers so it's described in, if you look at the configuration the lora config that's basically you you would get um all what is needed so this is if i just choose the lora config so these are all the the lora config right and it can tell you exactly what target modules you know the names of the modules to apply the adapter to if this is specified only the modules with the specified names uh when passing a streak this will be done a, a rigged x match so that means it's based on name prefixes you know that whatever match will be there so that's how it's specified yeah. so i think you can go and exactly this is what i was saying target modules in this okay. case only q and v right so it's selected or in others target modules can be this that means the q k v out projection fc that means fully connected layer the full connected in and the fully connected out as well as the wte so you can specify what in, in the target modules okay yeah so this okay. this basically specifies exactly uh, the part so abdul hamid so i have a question regarding the training parameters yeah. so let's say we have we are trying to train llama in the 7b model yeah. so we we decide to train about 1 million of those parameters yes so what i am like trying to understand is are we going to update those one million parameters but how, how do you select we... exactly so you you have many ways to control one is choosing r a good r yeah. r tells you a smaller r means you know if you put r zero then no zero parameters yeah. right if you choose yeah. r to be one it's very very small parameters maybe like really really small so yes. normally you choose r to be four or eight or sixteen I think above 16, they have showed it's not that much helpful for yeah. most cases. Now so, that tells you how much fraction. So given the, the weight matrix, that the, the weights that you chose. So if you chose all the layers, now you know what R means because you know all the weights are then will be put into a square matrix or um, a matrix, and then the decomposition of that will just give you like you know. So if, if, for example, the length is, as I said earlier, let's imagine a 7 billion parameter, the, the height and the width of the matrix could be, let's imagine uh, 10 million. So 10 million would be 10 to the 7 and 10 to the 7. Uh, that is, um, you know, it's actually, if it's 1 million, it's even a, it's probably 1 million by one, like, Maybe it's it's gonna be 100,000, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 5. So that would give you 10 to the 10. So that's basically exactly 10 billion. So for a model of 10 billion parameters, uh, it's width, the matrix is 10,000, 10,000, right? Or uh, no, 100,000 and 100,000. Now the 100,000, now you if you choose R to be four, what we are now talking about is, you know, 100,000, times four 
times two because of the decomposition. So then you choose, you try to almost always then find this R such that the number of parameters are what you want. Another one to reduce the parameters is to not use all the layers, but choose only some layers. So based on that, you can actually get your number of parameters. Yeah, so so we are training those parameters and we are actually updating those parameters, right? Not only adding exactly. additional parameters. No, no, I mean, we're adding additional parameters, but we, uh, it's kind of variables, you know? Think of them, the original one is, con is contained by a variable called V. And this, okay. you know, and the second variable, the second one is V prime. You use V prime to be the same as V, but you are kind of adding it, you know, only the selected V prime. V prime is just a subset of that. And then later, you know how V prime, how you want to add to V. So that's basically what it is. So you, you are kind of, the variables are different. So because of that's called adapters. So you added a new variables that contains only change. So that, that change is called delta W. The change in weights, this variable is, the new variables are the change in weights that you have to introduce to the original, the pre-trained weights. So they represent delta W. So at the end, the model would still be 7 billion parameters, right? Yes, the pre-trained doesn't change at all. Your adapters are basically a subset of those parameters and how they contain, the adapters contain how you change the original parameters. So they basically means, do you add one do you, or do you subtract one? Like from this weight, from that weight, from the selected weights. So it, okay. it's basically, yeah, the final parameter doesn't change at all. For the inference, if, if you are inferring on a seven, you know, using a seven billion parameter pre-trained, ultimately you are also inferring the seven billion one. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, so I hope that this clarifies the part, um, this one, and let's talk later. If, you are, if there are more questions, I, I think we will stop only, we'll start only this discussion because I don't want to take time if there are questions um, from interested groups because I think it, it's taking us so much time only discussing and not uh, already the, the instances are giving you issue. So let's focus, but if there is a need, uh, I think, for discussion about data, about other parts, then we can also come back for a Q&A uh, as well, whenever you need. But let's stop it for now. I hope that is clarified and I hope there's gonna be progress. Okay, cheers guys. And sorry for taking so long time. Bye.